Hi, my name is Rich Roberts. I'm a medical doctor in internal medicine. I'm a doctor of biophysics. And for 24 years, I was the president and CEO of a pharmaceutical company. I'm here to give you a very brief update on what's happening with COVID-19. And then I'm gonna get into the, the, the numbers that we're hearing that really are not relevant. And yet those are the numbers that are being used and the numbers that really are relevant. Um, and then finally, what you really need to know that people are not speaking about, about this virus. Okay, first, quick review. Um, the, the coronavirus is spiking, not only, not only in the United States, but also throughout Europe and the other, in the other industrialized nations and elsewhere in the world. Uh, remdesivir has been approved for uh, intravenous administration in the hospital. Remdesivir is a, is a drug. However, remdesivir doesn't do very much. It'll take the hospitalization down on average by a few days, 14 days down to 10 days, but it, but someone who is, uh, but it doesn't decrease the death rate. Um, Regeneron is a company that's coming with uh, monoclonal antibodies. There's actually two monoclonal antibodies mixed together. And these are actually the antibodies that your body would make, um, and they're being, uh, uh, two, of them are, two of the best ones have been combined and when President Trump was in the hospital with uh, COVID-19, and he was, he was given this on an experimental basis or a compassionate basis, uh, I, I strongly suspect this is what caused his immediate uh, turnaround. There are also other therapies, such as uh, high-dose steroids, dexamethasone, the, the name is not important, that um, also will, uh, it greatly decreases the rate of death from this virus. But as you'll see, but first of all, it still hasn't stopped it. So plenty of people are dying from this. Um, and unfortunately, they're going to die from this. And, um, uh, but, but it is a, a, a great help with the cytokine, cytokine storm. Yes, well, there was the release of, uh, by the way, when it comes to monoclonal antibodies, yeah, Lily has one. Um, it's approved now, uh, compassion, going for compassionate use for uh, early to moderate uh, infection. So there are things coming. And uh, we all know about Pfizer, had the 90% effectiveness uh, in developing antibodies for their vaccine. There's other vaccines coming, Moderna and others. Um, the fact is they will probably be approved, one would guess around um, December, January. Initially, uh, for at least when it comes to Pfizer, their um, vaccine is going to be shared with other countries around the world. So you, know, you see first responders, uh, uh, physicians, nurses, people working in hospitals, ambulance people and those types, uh, and then the very, very highest risk people getting access to the vaccine first. Um, lastly, it's not known how many people have to be successfully vaccinated to get herd immunity against this virus. There's been a lot of controversy, a lot of disagreement among different experts, some crazy numbers like some people saying like, 15, 10, 15% have to be vaccinated. That's ridiculous, utterly ridiculous. It's gonna be much higher than that. But whether it's gonna be 50%, 70%, 90%, I don't know. Um, in terms of infectiousness, we look at the, what's called the R0 value. Uh, COVID-19, R0, the R0 value is around 2.5. So it's not like measles, which has an R0 value of 14, which means it's unbelievably contagious. And yet, Flu only has an R0 value of about one. So this is much more contagious than flu. And then unfortunately, something like an Ebola, which is uh, very deadly, has an R0 value of less than one. So we don't know what percentage of people need to be vaccinated successfully. My guess is it's gonna be somewhere in that 70%, 80% range. Um, but the truth is that if it's for you and you don't wanna get this virus, which is what I'm gonna speak about at the, at the end of this talk, um, you really probably should get vaccinated. Speak to your medical doctor. Everything I say today is um, just my opinion, and you need to speak, to speak to your medical doctor. Now, let's go on to masks and shutdowns. <clears throat> um, there, if you look back at my videos, it's something I like about YouTube is you can't go back and change your videos and have the video have the same original date. If I, made it, if I would make a change to a video now on YouTube, it would show today's date on it. So you can go back and see that seven months later, seven months ago, excuse me, seven months ago, I told everybody that, the, um, uh, that, that, that what we really need to do is 
require everyone to wear masks whenever they leave their homes and have an onerous fine associated with that. In other words, you go out of the home, your home or off your property, I should say, without a mask and you're caught, you get written up for some very, very high dollar fine. Um, now there are se uh, several European countries that are getting ready to implement this and even a, a few states in the United States are considering it. If everybody would wear the masks whenever they are out of the out of their off their property, this virus would go away. Period. Period. Now, uh, and by the way, and why it doesn't happen, uh, I don't know. Uh, some, you know, the election is over, so I can tell you some people want to blame President Trump, but it's not his fault. It's the governors that would have to implement such policies. And um, before you blame the governors, you can see that even in Europe where they also tried to do this, uh, they could, you just can't get, you can't, uh, it's called herding cats, right? Um, cattle, uh, uh, um, uh, sheep, they tend to herd together. Cats go in their own directions. So when you try to get everybody to do it, and there's just so many people who just won't do it. Um, unless, of course, there's a financial penalty, which is why that's really what, what's needed. Um, so what will happen, I don't know. Now, let's go on to uh, but, but if you check back, by the way, to my videos seven months ago on YouTube, I was telling everybody, this is what we need to do to stop this virus. You're seeing, you're hearing numbers, unbelievably high numbers of new cases of infection in the United States. I'm going to speak about the United States going forward. Um, there, for example, uh, uh, last week at one Friday, there were 157,000 new cases of, of COVID. The question has always been, um, are these because the virus is spreading like crazy or is this because we're just testing more, right? If you have a barrel of apples and, and one out of every five apples is green, the other four are red. Well, if you pick out five apples, you probably get one green and four red. OK, but if I if I take out, um, you know, uh, uh, 25 apples, I'm probably going to get five green and 20 red. It's the same proportion. But the issue is. Um, you say, oh, I have, oh no, there's, there's five green apples now where there used to be one green apple. Well, that's only because you're testing more. And that's what we're doing. You're, you're, in that case, you're testing 25 apples versus five. We're testing much more. The tests are much more, much more uh, available. They're faster, they're better. And that's why we're picking it up. So how much does the high number of positive tests really reflect that things are going in the wrong direction? So these, this is the, these are the numbers that will tell you what's going on. It is not the number of people who tested positive, which you're going to see the press freak out about. It's how many people are hospitalized. That means how many people are sick enough that they have to go into the hospital. That's something you can compare now, which is the outbreak occurring now as we're going into the fall and winter months versus what happened in the summer versus what happened in the spring, sort of March, April. And I printed out a couple of graphs for you. Um, if I uh, had more time, I would probably just, you know, uh, put a PDF of this on the screen. But this shows the daily deaths in the United States. And you can see that back in, um, in uh, the, the March-April period, when we had a crisis, it was, it was huge. And then it came down as we did um, uh, some isolations uh, going on, shutdowns. And then in the summer months, it came up. And then we, 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 again, the more shutdowns, and now it's going, the deaths are going up again. So it's clear that we're headed on an upward, um, upward, upward direction now. And this is independent of testing. This is the number of people actually dying. But the trouble is these deaths usually lag the number of people sick by four to six weeks. It takes about six weeks for the virus to spread and lots of people get sick, and another six weeks for people to die. I'm sorry to be be so um, uh, so straightforward, but that's how it is. So here's what's going on now in terms of hospitalizations. Now, the, the, the lines at the bottom are for other countries, but the green line um, is for the United States. So you can see for hospitalizations, um, we, in March in, you know, March and April, when the first hit, there, were, there was this huge spike of hospitalizations. Then it came down through shutdowns and whatever. Then in the summer again we had memorial labor day memorial day people at the beaches people sort of thought maybe it was over we had a huge spike of, of of hospitalizations again 
And then that came down again with further efforts to quarantine. Now, what's happening? The number of hospitalizations are shooting up. And it looks like with this trajectory, the number of hospitalizations is going to go way, way, way past the numbers that we had in the previous two spikes. Um, now, and that you would expect also the deaths, unfortunately, will also probably go up. These, these are other countries, these are European countries, some European countries, um, which also, by the way, you can see they're starting to spike upward now, but that's another topic. So, um, so this is the real, these are the real numbers to show you that things are really, really bad and they're, they're going in a bad direction. Now, I wanna make a couple, another point though. In, a, in March, April, this spike was largely in um, New York, New Jersey, and California. Um, but now, with this spike that's happening, that's going way above it, it looks like this is happening all around the country. So right now, 48 states, 48 out of 50 states, are having major spikes in um, in this in uh, this environment, in this in the infection rates um, and hospitalizations. Uh, Europe, by the way, has reached a crisis. Many of their hospitals are at their limits. They can't take any more patients. And in the United States, we're almost there, uh, or some, we're just about there. Where, and it's gonna be not just New York, New Jersey, maybe not even so much New York or New Jersey yet, but other parts of the country, which is really bad news because the best estimates are that about 10% of, of our country has had the virus so far. So that means uh, there's 90% of people left that could potentially be infected. Now, lastly, um, here's the, the most important thing I want you to know. The most important number is not reported. It's not, re and the reason why it's not reported is not because uh, people are trying some conspiracy, trying to hold it back. There just isn't, it isn't known. It isn't, it isn't documented, but here's what it is. Coronavirus, COVID-19, does more than just kill people. Um, and of course, many, most people get it, don't end up dead. But you see the number of people who died from it versus people who got better from it. Um, and what we're missing is the much greater number. And to put it in very advanced medical terms, it's how, what percentage or how many people are really messed up? How many are really messed up by this virus? What I mean to say is from physicians all around the country, you're hearing, I'm hearing store, uh, reports that their patients or people I know, they are not okay. One guy, they, they, yes, they lived, some were on ventilators, some, most were not, they lived through it. Three months later, six months later, they're not okay. And we don't know what's gonna happen to these people. So when you go to a doctor for most diseases, They'll be able to tell you your one year, three year, five year, 10 year prognosis. But the only people in the world that have any experience with this virus more than one year are the people in the, in the um, Wuhan uh, Institute of Virology, where I believe the virus was, was uh, produced. Uh, no one else knows what's gonna happen three years, five years, 10 years down the road. But I can tell you, uh, um, doctors are seeing this all over the place. Um, now I'm going to give you just some stories, but they are, they are characteristic of what is going on all over the country. First of all, by the way, there was a study in Germany. I spoke about this another time where um, they looked at patient, 100 patients. Uh, three, they, had, they, had, they had COVID-19. They got completely better. And then they were studied, they were studied three months later. 78% of them had inflammation in their hearts after they were totally, months after they were totally better. So doctors, so I, I, I have a friend, he had coronavirus, COVID-19 coronavirus in March. Now we're in November, he still can't work. He's still debilit debilitated by it. A friend of mine has a store. A guy came in, who's was a regular customer, and the guy like was struggling to go through the invoice of just a couple hundred bucks, but tr struggling to just to read the lines. But this guy, is a very, or was, a very intelligent attorney. And he had coronavirus, and now he's mentally incapacitated from it. I have a friend who works in construction. He, a younger guy, I'm young, he's 43 years old. He had the coronavirus in March. He said he still doesn't have his energy back. He still doesn't have the stamina that he used to have. There are reports of people coming in with pain.
pains all over the body, pains in their chest, pains in, in, in different muscles, joints, uh, uh, many, many months, six months, seven months after they had the virus and got better. As I said in, in one, of, one of my earliest videos, and by the way, again, you can go back and look at my videos from seven months ago. Virtually everything that I said was going to happen has happened. It's not because I'm some, I'm, I'm some uh, religious prophet. It's because I'm a medical doctor and a scientist. And if you thought, would have thought about it, you would have known that's what's going to happen. The, the problem is this virus both infects the cells of the lungs, but also the cells of the, the, of the skin, the skin that lines blood vessels. And it causes inflammation in those blood vessels. And that's why uh, COVID-19 has also caused heart attacks and strokes in the short term because people got blood clots from that inflammation. But here's the big thing. We don't know if there's going to be long-term inflammation. And I warned about this back in March, the March-April period, that we don't know if five years from now, people are going to be having heart attacks or strokes that, that statistically shouldn't have them for another 20 or 30 or 40 years. So what I really want to say to you is, the bottom line I want to say to you is, you do not want to get this virus. Yes, young people get it, they get better. We don't know what happens long term. We don't know about scarring in the lungs. We don't know about long-term pot potential, potential long-term inflammation in the, in the blood vessels, which is very bad stuff. So please, not only do you need to wear a mask, but the other people out there have to wear a mask, right? When a surgeon wears a mask and he does surgery, is that so he doesn't catch something from the patient? No, it's so that he doesn't breathe onto the wound, open wound to the patient, it's breathing out bacteria that will infect that wound. So people, it's not, it's not good enough just to wear a mask yourself. Everyone else has to wear masks to make sure that they're not expelling coronavirus or COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, into the air. So, but I'm telling you, you really, really do not want to get this virus if you can avoid it. And especially as we're, 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 we're turning the final curve and we're heading to the finish line, the vaccines are, are, are almost here. So if you do anything to avoid it, please avoid it and stay healthy. Hope that this was helpful to you. Thank you.